I'm gonna teach you how to build a 5,000 watt off-grid solar power system that can fit on a hand truck. And this video will be for beginners. We're gonna go through every single step. And this system is large enough to run a cabin or a boat or an RV. You can run mini splits, you can run refrigerators, whatever you need. So let's get started. First, you need a hand truck. And this one is $79 at Harbor Freight. Next, you need a server rack battery, but you can use any 48 volt battery. I'll have a few listed down below. And then you need a ratchet strap so you can secure it to the hand truck. Next, you need a 5,000 watt all-in-one. This has the inverter, the solar charge controller, and the battery charger in one box. So everything in your system will connect right here. First thing that we want to connect is the battery. And to do that, you need battery cables, and these are two foot long. And they have lugs, and these are 5 16 inch holes. And I'll have some links down below on what to use. I made these, but you can easily buy these at the store. Even Walmart or Home Depot should have these. Now the all-in-one comes with two screws in the box to connect these cables. And the red cable is positive and the black cable is negative. So we want to insert it into the hole where it says positive and then put the screw on the screwdriver and carefully bring it in and tighten it down. And now the negative. Now we can connect the battery. Make sure it's turned off. There should be no lights on, the power button should not be pressed, and the circuit breaker should show green, not red. Now we can connect the battery with the screws that came with the battery. Next, our system needs power, so we need solar panels. And to connect solar panels safely, we're gonna use a solar panel disconnect switch. And on this side is where you connect the solar panels. It should look like this for the red one, and it should look like this for the black one. On the other side, we're gonna connect this to the all-in-one. And to do that, we wanna cut it off and then use wire strippers. Now we have a positive and a negative, and we can connect this to the PV input. It will show positive and negative. And first you wanna loosen them, and then tighten them down pretty good. Next, wiggle the wires to ensure there's a good connection. Next, to be able to connect loads or appliances to our system, we need to add receptacles or outlets. That way we can actually use the power that we generate from our system. But there's lots of ways to do this. Now this is a 5,000 watt inverter, so you need something large like an outlet box if you wanna use the total output capacity of this unit. This one is not that great because the wiring is inadequate. It's not very beginner friendly to upgrade this thing, but there are options like this on the market. So what most beginners do is use a power strip. This is safe to do, but it really limits the output of your system. This thing can only handle 1800 watts when this thing can handle 5,000 watts. Or you could use an electrical box with some outlets, but unfortunately this is not very smart because if you have two 20 amp outlets, this is almost 5,000 watts, but we have two pieces of Romex and only one terminal. So the proper way to do this is to have a load center and each outlet will have its own circuit breaker. But a lot of people just shove it in there and it works. Also, the inverter has its own overcurrent protection. So if there was a short, the inverter would catch it and it would shut down. And I actually tested this feature and it worked great. But for this demonstration, we're just gonna leave it to this. This is dead simple and it's only one conductor per terminal. And we have a ground, which is bare, we have a white that's neutral and we have a line or a hot that's black. We're gonna shove it through this hole and connect it to the terminal. And this is what it should look like. The L should be the black, the N should be the white, and then you're gonna have a ground for the bare ground conductor. And then tighten them down. Now the last part is super simple. The battery charger built inside needs an AC supply. So you can plug this thing into the wall and charge your battery if there's no solar power. And I found this at the hardware store. It's a nine foot tool replacement cord. And these are super common and they're already spliced for you. So you shove these into the hole and tighten them down. Again, green is for ground, white is for neutral, and black is for line or hot. Once they're tightened down, wiggle them to make sure there's a good connection. Now everything here is done so we can add the cover. Now we can turn everything on. So first we're gonna start with the battery. You wanna turn the breaker into the on position until it shows red. And then you press the power button second. 
This will charge up the capacitors in the all-in-one unit. You don't need to know what that means, just make sure the breaker is on first, power button is on second. And then the screen should turn on. And in a few seconds, the inverter will turn on. There's the fan. And now we have a green light. So we can plug in a heat gun or some loads and guess what, it works. Now we can test the AC charging. So take this cable and plug it into a wall. Oh, we have to turn it on. There's a breaker on the side for the AC input. We wanna flip it into the on position. And check it out, it's charging with AC power. Now let's connect a load and see what happens. You'll notice it says bypass, so all of the loads are being powered from the AC input. Now there's a few ways to change this behavior in the settings, or you can simply unplug it from the wall. And you'll notice that the heat gun did not turn off. It's because it has a UPS function. So if I'm powering a computer or something else, it will switch over to the inverter powered off of the battery so fast that you won't even notice it, which makes it great for backup power. You could run a refrigerator off of it. So 99% of the time it's running off the grid. And then when the grid shuts down, it will continue to run with the battery or your solar power if you have that as well. There's lots of settings and lots of ways to make it shift power from one source to the other. So check out the manual. There's lots to talk about there. Now the last thing we need to know how to do is to connect solar panels. And solar panels are the most dangerous part of an off-grid solar system. The voltages with DC are exceptionally dangerous. Before we connect anything, we want to make sure it's in the off position and you'll see a green color. If you see red, that's bad. You need to flip it the other way. Once it's green, we can connect solar panels in series. So you wanna daisy chain some solar panels. It doesn't matter which solar panel you use. You need to connect enough to create a voltage high enough to charge up this battery. And with this inverter, you specifically need a minimum of 120 volts. And for the best performance, you wanna bump it up at least 200 volts. So you have good performance in the morning and the late afternoon. Now, if you look at a solar panel, there will be a list of numbers. And the ones that we need is the operating voltage in the voltage open circuit. First, we're gonna figure out the minimum number of panels to create the voltage required for good performance. We're gonna take the operating voltage, which is 28, we're gonna divide that by 200. So 200 divided by 28 is seven. So we need a minimum of seven of these panels in series for this thing to work. Now for the maximum voltage, we do not want to exceed 500 volts. And for that, we need the open circuit voltage. And on this one, it's 33 volts. So we're gonna take 500 and divide it by 33. And that gives us 15, but to be on the safe side, we're gonna drop this down to 14. So for this system using this panel, we need seven to 14 panels. As long as it's within that range, we'll be golden. Now, even though we need seven to 14 panels, I only have two of these to show you the connection, but the concept is simple. No matter how many more panels you have, you wanna connect it like this. So the positive of one panel connects to the negative of the other. And then at the very end, you're gonna have a main negative and a main positive. And those connect right here to our PV disconnect. So let's do that. So here's the negative and here's the positive. And then this system should work. We can flip it on by flipping this switch. And if there was sunshine and enough panels, we could charge up our battery. Now the hardest part of this system is mounting the solar panels because you want to ensure that they're in a good position with lots of sunshine. And if this is not enough wire, which it obviously isn't, you need to use MC4 extension cables. They're very cheap and you can use it to connect this main negative and main positive to a solar array very far away. So you could have a bunch of solar panels in your yard and then connect them to your system with that extension cord. And I'll have that link down below. Now if space is limited and you don't have room for seven panels and you only have room for two panels or four panels, you can use a step up charge controller. That way you can use even a single small panel to charge a 48 volt battery. And the installation is very simple. You connect it to the terminals that are available on the battery. Now if you have 12 volt loads because you wanna run this in an RV or a van or a boat, you need a step down converter. And these are very simple devices. You connect them to a 48 volt battery with the available terminals. They have their own fuse, so you connect it directly to the battery, no problem. 
and then you have a positive and a negative for 12 volts and you can connect that to a 12 volt fuse block. That way if you have appliances that are 12 volts, you can connect it to that fuse block and then everything will work just fine. And that's it for this system. You have a complete off-grid solar power system. And if you don't like something, you can disconnect it and rebuild it. Or you can mount this on a wall and add more batteries. Or you could have a different battery. Or you can add a load center with multiple outlets. You could have 10 outlets connected to this thing. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to build, you can build it from this. This is the perfect beginner system. And this system is awesome because you can move it around. It's on wheels. So I hope this was helpful for beginners. If you have any questions, please let me know down below and I will respond to them. If you need more help and something's not working, post it on the forum. We have a massive forum for DIY solar. So check it out down below. So again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.